Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Psalm 119, verse 105, we read of the importance of being led by the Lord. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Rick and Matt now come to sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions. We search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, how is it that we can live even if we die? John chapter 11, verse, verse 25, but also the verses that surround that particular verse. Jesus here is speaking with Martha. Martha and Mary live in Bethany, and their brother, their only brother, Lazarus, who was a dear friend of Jesus as well as the disciples, Lazarus has died, he has been buried, and the mourning yet continues, the grieving. Jesus comes with his disciples after an intentional delay, a delay that he tells his disciples will demonstrate the power and the glory of God Martha complains to Jesus when he finally does arrive, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask, God will give to you. And Jesus tells her, your brother will rise again. And Martha responds, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus, this is verse 25 now, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. There seems to be a quandary and a difficulty there. Jesus, however, and the scriptures repeatedly refer to this, we need to sort out 
what is being spoken of as natural or physical life, human life, here in this world, we are alive in that our heart is beating and the blood is making its way through and there are bodily uh, functions that are taking place. There is also that life of eternity. Do we have Christ dwelling within? Do we have not just life here, but do we have eternal life? Jesus is speaking of both temporary physical life and eternal spiritual life, and the two need to be understood. Jesus here saying, he who believes in me will live. We will yet live in him, even if this body is set aside and placed in a grave, whether that be a cave of the first century or whether it be earth burial or whatever that may take place with the body, a burial at sea. That is something that is different. And Jesus then says in verse 26, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. There is also physical death and spiritual death. Are you alive not simply in terms of physical life, but are you alive? Have you shed, shed the uh, death that is eternal? It's, we must be born twice, born into this world and born into the kingdom of God that is born again, John chapter 3, if we are to live forever. If you're born just once, you're doubly dead because you will die in this world and you will never live in the world to come in Christ's paradise. And so these are the things that need to be sorted out when we come to John chapter 11, that there is physical and there is spiritual life and death, and we are warned accordingly. Question number two, will those in heaven remember our sins while we were still on earth? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, the questioner is picking up on an answer that I gave about how that in heaven we will not be more foolish or forgetful than we are here on earth. And the questioner is now taking it a step further and saying, look, that perhaps could give us some pause. Perhaps it could uh, cause some grief. It could cause some angst uh, of being in heaven and having our past known. Let us go to a few different passages. First of all, Psalm 103 and verse 12. We read, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Then also, Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 25, I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. Wipes out. And 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 and 9, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. And finally, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need to get a better understanding of what it means to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and also going back to both the Psalms, Psalm 103 and Isaiah 43, which speaks of God removing our transgressions as far as the east is from the west and what God means when he says, I will blot out, I will get rid of it, and it will be counted against us no more. I think that perhaps an excellent means of getting a handle on this is Helen Lemmel. She wrote, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth 
will grow strangely dim, strangely dim. That hooks in my thoughts on this very point. The things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. When we get to heaven, there's a bit of difficulty in understanding, well, if we know more than we do down here, what about those things which were out of line? Those blotted out, they will not be accounted against us by Christ, and they will not be a concern of anyone else either. We will dwell there, no tears from our eyes, dwelling in eternal light. Oh, what a glad day. So if you are troubled about the thought of heaven being a place of perfect knowledge, remember the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses the stain and it is gone. God who perfectly blots out those things which have been an offense to God and, of and offense to others as well, and he forgives, and we shall dwell there for all eternity and knowing his glorious peace and presence. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. We will get to it as best as we can on Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Jonathan Kavist now sings, Does Jesus Care? And that is followed by Heidi and Dorothy singing, Where He Leads, I'll Follow. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the
Our brand new CD is entitled, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. 13 songs to warm your heart and to bless you. We would love to pl place it into your hand and into your home. It's yours simply for your request when you write to us. Let me list just a few of the titles which are included on this new CD. Wonderful, merciful Savior. I have found a hiding place, paid in full. Heaven is near and nine more songs of blessing. Ask for your free copy of this new CD, Tis So Sweet, when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also call us toll-free 1-833-367-3852 or go to our website faithtoliveby.ca and make your request through that means. Now, just before the message, and taken from this new CD, Tis So Sweet, here is Ruth and Rick and Matt singing Through It All. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. Even times I felt so all alone, but in every situation God gave blessed consolation, that my trials come to only make me strong.
Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, and starting in the second part of that verse, these are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might. Of course, it's Christ's might that Paul is speaking of. And when he says these things, he is referring to the prayer that he has been praying for the Ephesians and for all who would read the letter. He is praying that these people would understand the greatness of God's power to change them from what they had been to what they are in Christ and the blessings that they enter into, not the blessings of this world, but the blessings which last for all eternity, the blessings which are a part of us, who are a part of the family of God, who trust in Christ, who believe his word. So he says, these things are in accordance. They naturally follow with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. God the Father working about the miraculous work of Calvary's cross, that Jesus went there in order to die for us. It was a part of God's vast plan, and now Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, exalted, high and exalted, just as we read verse 21, far, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. The name of Jesus Christ is the supremely exalted one. There is no name to compare with the name of Jesus Christ. And Paul, in his day, there were great names for sure. There was the names of the Caesars. There were the names of the philosophers. There were the names of all kinds of different people, the pharaohs of the Egyptian age and so far back in history. He could think back to the Nebuchadnezzars and to the all of the rulers that had come and gone. But Paul says there is one name that stands head and shoulders far above all of the rest, and lest there be some thought that, well, perhaps there will at one point in history, some day down the road, there will be one who will outstrip, who will surpass Jesus. Paul he gathers it all up and he says, there is one name and one name only that is far, far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, not only in the first century and what has gone previously, but in every age to come, there will never be a name that surpasses the name of Jesus Christ, for he is God's son, the one who took on human flesh in order through the love of God to redeem, to buy back a race of humans that was lost in sin, that we had gone our own way and spit in God's face and said, good riddance, we don't want to have anything to do with you. We would rather believe the lie of the devil than to believe in the truth of God. Christ is high and exalted indeed. And the Father, as a result of Jesus Christ having obediently gone to the cross for you and for me, he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of all who fills, all in all. Paul will then go on to speak more about the church, but he wanted to introduce in this first chapter, the vastness, the unparalleled character of the work of God in Christ Jesus. And he says, Jesus is all in all. He was all in all to Paul. And let me say, he should be all in all to you as well. 
we should, each and every one of us, come before him, bowing the knee and confessing him as Lord and Savior. If you have not yet done that, today is the day, my friend. Today is the day to come and to declare him, not just Lord of the universe, but Lord of your life. There's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.